So with this photosynthesis question, we've got a medium question, that, which means that we need about five to six points in order to get the full array of uh, marks allocated. So relatively straightforward question, explain how the rate of photosynthesis can be measured. And there's a few different ways that we can measure the photosynthesis. And if you had a look at some of my previous videos, every time there's a chemical reaction, we want to first write out the reaction first. So we can be make sure that we uh, haven't missed out on any small points. So with photosynthesis, what occurs? Well, we've got three different products, um, three different reactants, sorry, or three different substrates. First one is carbon dioxide, second one is water, and the final one is light. And these are our substrates. And that actually goes across towards, uh, we've got a few different things. So first of all, we've got oxygen, as well as biomass in the form of glucose, um, as well. So this is a biomass. Good. So this is what we're looking at so far. And um, we can straight away use this kind of uh, framework to see what variables can be measured. And the ones which the IB wants you to know about is the CO2, they want you to know about production of oxygen, and they want to, you to know about this over here, so production of glucose or biomass. So let's talk about that first. As you have photosynthesis occurring across in this particular direction, things on the left are going to decrease because they're going to be used up, whereas the things on the right are going to increase because you're, you are using the things on the left to make the things on the right. So you, we'd expect carbon dioxide to go down. So that's the first way. So measuring, measuring photosynthesis. Can be achieved by measuring the decrease or uptake in carbon dioxide. And as a result of that, decreasing carbon dioxide also means that the solution is going to be less acid. Think of carbon dioxide as an acid. When it dissolves into water, it actually becomes something called carbonic acid. And if you decrease that, then it's going to increase in pH. And um, that means it's going to become more basic. So well, let's talk about that as well. So, um, photosynthesis. can be indirectly measured by a change in pH. So this is a change in pH. Okay, so that's everything on the left. With H2O, it's somewhat difficult to measure that, as well as the light. You know, you've got a whole degree of light, unless you've got a specific, um, you know, sensor which can measure the degree of light. It's somewhat difficult to, you know, quantitatively measure it. Um, but in theory, absolutely, you could measure the, the input of H2O as well as light. Let's talk about things on the right. So you can directly measure it by the increase in O2. So photosynthesis, you remember, don't do these two apostrophes in the exam. You would write the whole line of photosynthesis. Can be measured by increase in O2 or oxygen. Very easy. And on the right hand side as well, by the increase in biomass as well. Once again, this is an indirect amount. So instead of measuring C6H12O6, we're measuring how much heavier the plant gets. Because as a plant gets heavier, it's most likely be due to the biomass more than anything else. So, photosynthesis can be indirectly measured
Okay. So after that, then we've noticed that we've got four points here, but this is a medium question. So we want at least five to six. And the way that you're going to get the last few points is by doing an example. And this example is relatively easy to do. So let, let's look at this one first. So one example that many people will do is uh, they will draw a diagram, which is a brilliant idea. A picture is worth a thousand words and it's also worth a thousand marks in the IB exam as well. So if we draw our beaker here, so remember to label this as a beaker. We have our water. And then we have our circle, little circles of leaves. So these are our defined areas of photosynthetic pigment, um, which is just like the hole punches of leaves. This is one of the experiments that I did back in the, my second year of IB. And we'd have little small circles of leaves and this would produce oxygen as photosynthesis occurred. And the way that you would talk about this at the end is you would say that rate of photosynthesis is measured by rate of O2 production. But if you have leaves or those little green circles, generating oxygen underneath water, what's going to happen? It's the oxygen bubbles. So it's the generation of these bubbles which you're measuring. Okay? So the final thing is that you give an example as well. So you give an example of an example. So within the example, what happens if photosynthesis was to increase? What would you expect? You'd increase you'd expect an increase in uh, oxygen bubbles per unit time. So as photosynthesis rate increases, number of bubbles counted per unit time increases. Good. So the final thing is uh, that we'll have a we'll count up how many points that we've got. So we're expecting around about five to six points as this is a medium question. So we've talked about indirectly measuring it by or or directly measuring it rather by an increase in carbon dioxide as well as indirectly by a change in pH. So on the right hand side, oxygen, an increase, as well as an increase in biomass, which is indirect. We gave a schematic of um, this, of this uh, beaker, and this is our schematic of our experiment. And we also explained what would happen uh, as, bias, as photosynthesis rate increases. So there we've got about five to six marks, and that's our maximum allocation of marks for this particular question. Our next question is somewhat different. So it's also about photosynthesis, but we have to talk about things that affect the rate of photosynthesis. So we're not talking about products as well as substrate. We're talking more about the substrate itself. So three different environmental conditions. Very easy. The three different ones that uh, the IB wants you to know about are firstly light intensity. Also want you to know about temperature. And the final one they want you to know about is carbon dioxide concentration. All things that are relevant to enzymes. This is essentially CO2. So that's essentially substrate concentration. Um, and this is essentially one of the other substrate concentrations as well. If you remember from our diagram over here, we have CO2 plus H2O plus light 
These are our substrates. So as we increase CO2, we'd expect photosynthesis to occur in a, in a greater rate, as well as if light increases, it would occur at a greater rate. Okay? Let's talk about light intensity. We can draw, um, we'll draw a graph at the bottom later, but what would it, we expect? Well, what we would expect is that as light intensity increases, we'd have an increase in the rate of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So as we increase this, we have an increase up until a plateau where it stops and it won't increase anymore because the rate of photosynthesis, the maximum rate of photosynthesis has been reached. How about temperature? Let's draw a bit, bit of a bigger diagram this, in this case. So temperature on the x-axis, rate of photosynthesis on the right-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side of photosynthesis. And as we increase it, then we'd have an increase in rate of photosynthesis as well. However, once it gets to a certain point, straight away it would back down. And this is due to the denaturation of the enzymes. Final one, CO2 concentration looks almost identical. In fact, exactly identical as the one on light intensity, because we're talking about substrate concentration. So let's label our axes again. Never forget to label your axes with the zeros in the bottom left-hand corners as well. And then at the very bottom, we would have an increasing, increasing rate of photosynthesis up to a certain point, then plateauing off due to the maximum rate of photosynthesis being achieved. But now we need to actually talk about these points. So we're going to write down the points that I just talked about. So increasing uh, light intensity leads to increasing rate of photosynthesis. So I'm just going to write photosynthesis in PS. You would obviously write photosynthesis the full word. Um, so that's one point until it plateaus. And this is due to the fact that a maximum rate of photosynthesis has been achieved. Okay, so the next point is regarding temperature. So with temperature, it's very similar in, uh, in the first place. As temperature increases, rate of photosynthesis also increases. Until it reaches a maximum, Um, and then after that, um, there's a rapid drop, rapid drop in photosynthesis rate, and this is due to denaturation of enzymes. Okay. Now let's finally look about talk about CO2 concentration, which is the same as light intensity. As CO2 concentration increases, rate of photosynthesis also increases until a maximum, which is this point here. wherein afterwards the maximum rate of photosynthesis has been achieved.
And if we look at this type of question, it's a medium question. So I'm expecting about five to six marks. And there's actually two marks per um, variable that is varied. Okay, so if we look here, this will give us one point, what, two points, three points. Um, these will also give us one point, two point, three points. Essentially, you get a point for describing what happens initially for this point here. Then you get another point for describing what happens afterwards for the, either a maximum plateau being reached or a denaturation occurring. And then you need to explain why you have that change. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So all up, we've got nine points, which would definitely give us our maximum degree of points. Great. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.